uh, we will speak about the different uh, genomics uh, uh, role of the insect, how we are able to manage its populations. Before going to details of my seminars, I am highly grateful for the organizers who are involved in the organization of this great series of the seminars. Really, it's a wonderful idea to disseminate the research and to exchange the scientific ideas, which further opens new avenues for the collaborations. And I appreciate the leadership of the Professor Dennis, who always uh, uh, instrumental in such type of scientific activities. Okay, all the years and the participants who, partic uh, who are joined to listen to my talk, I'm highly grateful for your patience and your understandings and the listenings to my uh, discussions. Today, as per theme of the ICGB, uh, we are working on the insects, but we are trying to discuss the role of the genetics in the insect management. The, our topic is today is that insect functional genomics, the role of insect functional genomics in the development of innovative green plant production strategies. Actually, I want to make a clear over here so why we people want to manage the insect populations. Either it is so dangerous for us, why we are investing a lot of money, investing a lot of time to control these uh, tiny creatures. Yes, it is of uh, extremely important and it has tremendous potential to destroy the whole universe with famines. Our food security is uh, greatly threatened by these tiny creatures. That's why we are trying to manage these populations. We are trying to manage the population of the insects and we want to regulate the population of the insects and to keep at certain levels so that it not cross the certain threshold levels. That's why we are interested to manage it through some green plant production strategies in order to protect the environments, in order to conserve our environments. If you can see insects, constitute a remarkably diverse and largest animal group in the world. According to an estimate, more than 70% of all the species are the insects. From this statement, you can imagine that how big this tiny creature population exists over this universe. They are so tiny, they are so humble creatures, but they have tremendous potentials. They are extremely powerful tools to, dis to disturb the humanity, to disturb our food security. That's why we are trying to manage them. They not only destroy our crops, they are, they are, they are always not enemies to us. They are play, they playing a critical role in the pollinating agents in the pests, and they also disseminate some pathogens through the vectors into for important uh, pathogen transmitted diseases, and they also play critical roles in the medicals. From this figure, you can have an idea that almost half of the animal kingdom is composed of the insects. Almost half of the animal kingdom, the rest of the whole animal kingdom is composed of vertebrates, plants, and other things. But uh, insects are present everywhere in the world. Are, they are tiny creatures, and they are located, found each and every parts of the world. So functional genomics of parasitic hominoptera. I just want to discuss a quick uh, case studies Functional genomics of the parasitic hemiroptera may lead to the development of innovative plant production strategies. Because insect functional genomics, we can apply in the management of the insect pest uh, through uh, rational ways. But we want to make a specific approach where the functional genomics help us to develop certain control tools, to develop uh, cer uh, certain management strategies. If you can just uh, look at the statement, Reduction of pesticide use is one of the major objectives in sustainable agriculture, largely pursued by considering the alternative use of environmentally safe products and biological control agents. Up till now, more majority of the insects, they are being controlled by the use of chemicals, which we generally call as the insecticides. These insecticides are cheapest and these insecticides the quick, quickest way to control the insects. No doubt they give a very best control the insects, but on the other hand, they have very drastic impact on our environments. A number of antagonistic association insects are poorly known and underexploited, and source of novel natural compounds. 
disrupting the growth, development, and reproduction and immune system of the insects. They are under considerations to develop the chemical you know, to develop some alternative controls other than the chemicals. In contrast to broad spectrum chemicals, pesticide, these biotechnological based products can specifically target pest species, reducing adverse impacts and safety in non-target organism and the environments. Here, from this slide, I want to show one thing. Let me check the chat. Someone is telling me, I think, please feel free to put your questions. Okay, it's from the Dennis. From this slide, you can have an idea. The, the people who are involved directly in the insect science, they know the insect has very fascinating life. Its life has completely four different stages. And according to that, we call this is a complete process of metamorphosis. When insect is in the process, which you call the larval stages, it is the immature stage, which is the most feeding and damaging stage of the insects. Insects all the way are going to destroy the, our crops, vegetables, greens, everything when insect is in present in its immature forms, which is known as larval stages. Egg stage is a non-feeding stage. Pupa stage is non-feeding stage. And adult is normally a reproductive stage of the insects. But mostly the insects damage during larval stages. But there are different biotechnological interventions in which we are able to reduce the feeding period, feeding lifetime of the insect, so that insect can immediately jump to the next developmental stage, which you call the people stage. And the feeding potential of the insect can be reduced by reducing the feeding time period by, uh, or by reducing its uh, larval period or immature periods. Here, just a quick overview. And if uh, for the case study, this is a fall herbivore. Most of people, you have an idea about that fall herbivore. It destroys the whole corn, uh, corn industries throughout the Pakistan and throughout the whole world. And here you can very clearly have an idea that before the attack of that fall herbivore, what is the situation of the crop? And after the attack of the fall RB bomb, you can see what, what would be the situations you can see over here. And this, that creatures, that uh, tiny insect had destroyed the corn industries in throughout the world. And in this way, it also threatens our food security. So it becomes a challenge for the entomologist. It becomes a challenge for the scientists. Now only the way which we call the insect functional genomics, which we call the insect genetics, are able to tackle to some extent to these creatures. But even the transgenic crops, even the transgenic plants, even the transgenes, they have become, they fail to control these organisms due to the development of the resistance. Later on, I will discuss all these things categorically. Here you can see again, they, these the insects, they also destroy the cottons. Like in Pakistan, Pectinifera gossypiella had destroyed the whole BT cottons. Even the BT cottons, which has the transgenes, it destroyed the whole cotton in the countries. Likewise, um, I have an idea. It has also the same situations in other, in other parts of the countries. Up till now, these insects are successfully controlled by the use of the toxic chemicals, which we generally call the insecticides. But these insecticides have very serious problems for the peoples. Neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease have been linked to toxic chemical exposure. It has been reported in the literature that exposure to these toxic chemicals disturb the physiology of the non-target organism, disturb the biochemistry and behavior of the non-target organisms. That's why scientists, are, scientists have to uh, forced to find some novel alternatives of the, these chemicals. The major uh, significant uh, drawback of the use of the insecticide in the control of the insects in agriculture sector is the development of the resistance. Although resistance development is a natural phenomenon, every living organism has its immune system. When anything enters into the body of the insects, it becomes uh, detoxified and its immunity is enhanced. And this resistance development in the insects become a challenge for the entomologist to control the insect pest populations. So insects among, among the most adaptable organisms on the face of the earth. The adaptability of the insects has become the successful creature over this universe. They are abundantly found everywhere and they have been successfully found everywhere due to adaptive uh, uh, qualities. Managed to survive 400 million years ago, adjusting to changes in the environment. So extensive use of the chemicals or repeated use of the toxic chemicals have developed the resistance in the insects. 
After that, the scientists uh, found certain novel genes through the study of insect functional genomics, through the study of insect genetics, insect proteomics, and due to the advancement in the genetic knowledge in the insect science, the scientists are able to find some Bt endotoxins, then VIPs, vegetable insect proteins, protease inhibitors, serine protease inhibitors, cysteine protease inhibitors, alpha myelase inhibitors, lectins, enzymes, and other novel genes. These are all these genes which are naturally present in the body of the insects or which are present in the body of the other organisms and they are used to disrupt the population of the insects. They're, in other words, we can say these are lethal to the other insects and these, these type of approaches, they are highly specific, they are environment friendly and they can only hit the target organisms. Very quick overview, Bt introductions, all of you have an idea about the bacillus thuringiensis soil bound bacterium and this they it produced the spores which have the toxin and that particular toxin belong to the protein family cry which could, that is known as cry toxins and then this cry toxin enters into the body of the lepidopterous insects lepidopterous in all types of ballworms when it enters into the bodies and due to the alkaline nature of their ph it becomes activated and it uh, destroy the alimentary canal or food gut food pipe of the insect so insect dies due to starvations. Due to the attack of cryotoxin, insect stops feedings. It stops feeding and the gut content comes out and th this uh, toxin uh, immediately kills the insects uh, after stopping the insect from the uh, taking diets or food. That's why BT technology is, has become famous and successful all over the world. And this gene has been trans inserted into many types of the plants and the uh, plants of vegetables, fruits. That's why these are known as Bt, BT plants or Bt crops. And here there is the classes of few cry genes. For example, cry 1, 2, cry 1, 2, and 9, they have been reported to be effective against the Lepidopterus pest. Lepidoptera is an insect order which has almost all types of harmful insects very dangerous and damaging insects comes, comes in the Lepidopterus order. And mostly these three genes are highly effective against the control of this Lepidopterus insects. Likewise, Cry3, Cry7, Cry8, they are effective against the Coleopterus insect. Beetles and weevils, they belong to that insect. And Cry4, Cry10, and Cry11, they are effective to control the flies and the mosquitoes. They belong to the order Dipta. Here's a quick summary uh, from the literature Okay, what type of cryo genes are isolated and uh, in which crop they are inserted uh, to protect them against pest. For example, in alpha alpha crop, cry one AC is present and it protects that crop against its protopter lutrolylus. Then in broccoli, cry one AC protects from protula xylostella and paris brassica, paris rapi. Like in canola, is is protopter exigua, chickpea, cotton, particularly in the cotton, cry one AB, cry one AC. These two genes, double gene called Bt varieties, Bt cotton variety, is uh, protected against Heliotis armigera and Pectinophora gossypilla. But unfortunately, honestly, I'm telling, cotton crop in Pakistan is totally failure due to the attack of the Pectinophora gossypilla. That pink problem, which is called as Pectinophora gossypilla, has developed resistance against these genes. Currently, we have only single gene variety in the country, but now the scientists are working. They have developed two double gene quarter variety, triple gene quarter variety, but still Pectinophora gossypiella has uh, resistance against these toxic genes. So grounded, eggplant, maize, in, even in the maize, cry one AB, cry one AC, it is responsible to protect the crop against the Chylus supercellus, which is called as maize borer. And such type of transgenes, they are responsible to protect the plants against certain dangerous insect pests in potato, rice. In rice, although we don't have any transgenic rice in our country, but in the world, in the China, there is a transgenic rice is there, which contains cry one ab cry one ac and it is protected against the rice leaf folders and chyra supercellus, sorghum, soybean, tobacco. And these are all examples of the plants, food plants, vegetable plants, which have the Bt genes and these plants are supposed to be expected, protected against these insect pests. A quickly overview, you can see, see the transgenic rice, it is uh, 
quite to be it, it looks to be protected against the pest and this is their traditional rice non uh, transgenic rice and it is uh, uh, it has serious attack of the pest particularly rice leaf holder kinephylocrosis medinalis it has very drastic impact on the rice crop and it plays a significant role in the yield reductions likewise in the corn in the bt corn and non bt corns bt corn they are to some extent protected against the attack of uh, fall army worm and chiropartalis as compared to the non bt corns vegetative insecticidal proteins this is another type of proteins isolated for the protection of the insects uh, against the different type of the pest and the uh, this isolation of the protein is possible by the study of uh, insect functional genomics proteomics and through an integrated approach of the functional proteomics and physiological studies and when these proteins are present in the plants they induce gut paralysis followed by complete lysis of the gut epithelium cells resulting in larval death it means uh, they destroy the insect during its immature stages which is our main target because we want to kill the insects during its immature stages because this is the larval stage and if the insect dies during this immature stage automatically its larval period stops this is a protein inhibitor say the first gene of plant origin successfully transferred to another plant species resulting in enhanced resistance was isolated from cowpeas this protein is considered to be particularly effective and suitable candidate for genetic engineering of the plants the main important thing is that mode of action of a protein inhibitors activities against proteolytic enzyme of the insects interfere with the process of digestion say so it's a mode of action is very novel mode of actions when these proteins inhibitors are inserted are in carrying plants and insect feed on these plants this protein inhibitor inserted into the body body of the plants during the feeding process and they it interfere with the proteolytic enzyme which interfere with the process of the digestion and ultimately digest due to digestive problem insect will lead to the death here is a quick example of how the protein inhibitors uh, play a role to protect the plants against the mendusa sexeta in tobacco in particularly potato and tomato it is protected against the attack of mendusa sexeta due to the presence of the protein inhibitors like serine protein inhibitors it is also protected against heliotis variations which is a serious and voracious feeder of these plants and uh, spodotra lutrolalis and mendusa sexeta in transgenic tobaccos there are a lot of enzymes are there enzyme particularly chitinase enzymes they have also been isolated by studying the insect functional genomics and proteomics enzymes they play critical roles particularly chitinase enzymes chitin is a substance through which the insect the outermost covering of the body is synthesized if this enzyme is inhibited to synthesize the chitin to produce the chitin then abnormal growth of the insect takes place due to its abnormal growth due to septormal development insect dies before reaching to its maturity so chitin synthesis inhibitors are very important uh, tools very important biotechnological tools to inhibit the insects to control the insect growth during its early developmental stages in addition to that a number of novel genes are there they are uh, extracted from the venoms venom which we call the poisons and uh, there is a venom which is present in the venom of the scorpions and that particular gene venom gene is very effective against the uh, helicoverpa arbigera and like where there is a spider venom it is also responsible to protect the plants potato plants against the helicoverpa arbigera these venom based uh, biopesticides venom based natural products are becoming very famous because they are Uh, they 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 are not neurotoxic in actions they have other uh, novel mode of actions and they are very stable compounds they are responsible to control the protect the plants against these uh, notorious insect pests so we uh, uh, lay out some basic works on the venoms we have isolated some the uh, venom genes by analyzing the transcriptomic assemblies of the parasites which you call the break on habitus it is an ectoparasite larval ectoparasite of a diverse range of lepidopter species so we isolated 
So we isolated some few virulent genes which can be implied to control a diverse range of parallel family of the lepidopters. And we have synthesized, analyzed transcriptomic assembly. We have plenty of active genes database where we can isolate these genes and we can uh, utilize these gene products as a novel bioinsecticides or novel biopesticides to control the lepidopter space. Likewise, we use different, uh, another uh, parasteroid system, which is known as Initius erythronensis. It is a solitary endoparasteroid of cotton millibug, which is known as Phenococcus solinapsis. That pest has destroyed cotton in Pakistan since 2005. It's a sucking pest and it completely deceived the plants. And due to the chain out of the nutrients of the plants become very weak and uh, its uh, growth becomes stented. And that solitary endoparasteroid is very responsible, is very potent endoparasteroids for the phenococcus solinapsis. We have isolated some novel genes from this parasteroid also. <coughs> In addition to that, some we have isolated some uh, stress-related venom genes from the brecon habitus and which are responsible to uh, uh, disturb the regular, the regular development of the plutelia interpunctula. <laughs> Likewise, with our collaborations, we have isolated some long non-coding RNAs to break the resistance development in Pectinophora gossipella and BT cottons because there, uh, there are some uh, receptors. They have been mutated and uh, they have they have uh, mutated against the cry toxins. We try to uh, identify the cause of uh, mutations in receptors. Cadherin is one of the receptor which is mutated, and that's why uh, Pectinophora gossipella, pink ballworm, uh, is uh, has become resistant against all types of Bt cottons, particularly in Pakistan. But I think uh, everywhere in all the world, the situation is the same. So venom is biopesticide of hemeroptera. Parasitic origins is a key factor in regulation of the host physiology and potentially resource of novel bioactive substances for biotechnological applications. This is all possible due to the detailed understandings of the insect functional genomics and due to the, the detailed sequencing of different insect genomes. Here, uh, this is a case study of our lab that we have a parabrecon uh, habitus and we have established these radiant cultures on the uh, host Galeria melonella. And from this brecon habitus, which is a larval ectoparasteroid of pest insects of parallelary, uses biological control agent in the control of larvae of lepidopter pest in cotton, tomato, soya bone, and corn fields there. And this is this host, which is particularly known as uh, Vex moth. It is known as Vex moth, but it is technically Galeria melonella. That Galeria melonella is an economically important pest of Vex in the world. Say. So the study of the physiological molecular mechanism underlying host parasite interaction in insects provides very interesting opportunity to isolate genes and molecules with potential insecticide activities. And most review on the parasite physiology focus on the disrupting the describing identity of these factors and the effects they have on the host. Here you can have an idea that this is the uh, parasites, this is the host, and this brecon uh, uh, habitat is parasitizing the host in the wilds. After parasitizing, this host becomes like this way, and this host becomes uh, mummy-like structures, and it dies, and dies internally. And uh, at the death of the host is uh, an indication for the survival of the parasitoid progeny. Here you can see reading the, of the host cultures, we have established plenty of parasitoid culture in the labs, and this is all parasitoid cultures, uh, particularly uh, vex moth, Galeria melonella, and this uh, Galeria melonella uh, is uh, uh, responsible for the mass production of the parasitoid in the lab. That parasitoid, which is known as brecon habitat, has a strong reservoir. That reservoir has some active components, which are known as proteins, active proteins, these are active bioproteins, and these bioproteins are isolated so that we are able to isolate the genes of these uh, venom coding proteins. And then we are able to produce venom coding proteins abundantly through cloning, uh, uh, cloning procedures in the labs. Here, you can see venom, venom is produced in a pair of specialized glands. Here, these are the two specialized glands. Venom is produced in specialized glands and stored in a sac-like reservoir. The reservoir duct is attached to the terminal part of the common ovary duct 
a size range of venom proteins ranges from small peptide to less than 10 kilodaltons, the proteins of over 100 kilodaltons. And this is a just a, a short way how we are able to extract the venom glands and the venom from these structures. And after analyzing the venom gland transcriptome, we are able to classify the whole transcriptome. The whole transcriptome contains more than uh, approximately 66% of the housekeeping genes categories. It means uh, it has the genes which are responsible for the basic functions, which are responsible for the basic functions of the cells. And 5% category is related to the unknown genes and 29% category belong to the security proteins. We are interested in these security proteins and these are synthesized and they are secreted out of the cells and it belongs to the only 29% categories. So, the, so these, the, these proteins, these security proteins have some active components, some active proteins. So we also performed some function analysis. It was performed by following two practical approaches. Micro injections of the crude venom in non-parasitized host and microinjections of free component proteins in non-parasitized host, so that we are uh, we want to know the we want to assess the toxicity of the venom in the host insects. How this venom uh, performs lethal effects, virulent effects in the host mortality. So uh, it is injected micro uh, through microinjection technique, and then the gene of that uh, particular venom protein are isolated then recombinant proteins were produced and these recombinant protein also micro-injected through a non-parasitized host. And you can see, this is again a fall RB worm attacks. And here you can see uh, it destroy the whole maize cottons and can make gun short holes. And this is, we have tried to apply these recombinant proteins and the venom on these uh, uh, case study insects. Here you can see it is almost uh, dead. The larvae has become almost dead due to the application of these proteins. So, microinjection of venom, this experiment was conducted to check the biological activity of the crude venom. And crude venom treated with heat and protease on last star of fall RB1 spodoptera frugiparta by using microinjection techniques. So, different concentrations of the venom extracts, we started with the from the lowest concentrations 0.5 microliters, then 0.2 microliters, 0.1 microliters, and up to 0.05 microliters. We injected into the body of the host, and then we have checked their mortality functions and their lethal functions over there. So heat treatment, we also perform the heat treatment uh, with the venom so that uh, we should know what would be the active component of the venoms. To assess the sensitivity of the whole extract to heat, an inactivation protocol was adopted as described by that scientist. The heat inactivity treatment was performed by boiling the heat extract for five minutes. Then proteinase K treatment. Enzymatic digestion treatment was carried out by using active proteinase K, which were incubated with extract of which extract 37 Celsius, like this way. Actually, this treatment uh, uh, confirms the active component of the venom is the protein and we want to make it sure. Then analysis of the ONOVA, here you can see we have analyzed the data, we have checked the analysis of the data that when this injection enter into different concentrations of recon habitat, when enter into the host, it performs mortality and the data giving, uh, given a significant results. Here again, analysis of variance for person mortality is product of larvae by injecting different concentration of the brecon habitat venoms. And mean number and person mortality of Spodopta frugiparta larvae by injecting different concentrations of brecon habitats. Here's a mean comparison. Here you can see heat treated, proteinase care treated, and control treated. If with reference to the control, you can have an, you can have an idea. Controls remain to survive and remain to grow uh, remain to continue its development and grow stages as compared to the heat treated and proteinase K, K treated venoms. Analysis of variance of mortality is put up to larvae by injecting immune suppressive genes, specific recombinant proteins in host larvae, fifth in star. We have selected the large size larvae of the host, normally the fifth in star larvae, so that we can check the, if the lethal effects and mortality of the uh, host with a reference to the uh, injection of the micro injection uh, recombinant proteins. And then ANOVA mortality for percentage of host larvae is put up to by injecting immune suppressive genes 
specific recombinant protein in host fifth star larvae or fifth star genes. So generally, post pest resistance genetically modified crops can contribute to increase yield and agriculture growth. Pest resistance genetically modified crops can contribute to increase yield results and agriculture growth. Development and deployment of transgenic plants with insecticidal genes for pest control will lead to the reduction in insecticide spray, increased activity of natural enemies, and integrated pest management of the insect pest. All this happened, all these novel approaches, novel products, natural biotechnology-based interventions are happened only due to the deep understanding, comprehensive understanding of the insect genome projects. When, the, when insects are completely sequenced, the genome has completely sequenced, analyzed, interpreted, and published. Then we are able, how many virulent genes that particular organism has, how many toxic genes that particular organism has, so that we can use these uh, toxic genes, these particular genes, these insecticidal genes, to manage the pest population in a very environment friendly way, in a very effective and through green plant production strategies. And these are known as green plant production strategies, which are most normally non lethal, non lethal to non target organisms. And they have very categorically a positive impact on the environment. They don't destroy our environment. Now, the case study in our discussions, particularly the venoms. We are working on the venoms by analyzing their transcriptomes, by isolating their coding genes, by isolating their particular recombinant proteins. And we have uh, plenty of active genes, bioactive genes we have uh, in our groups, which can be exploited for the development of novel biopesticides. I mean to say all this happened due to the uh, role of critical and significant role of insect functional genomics for the development of green plant production strategies. And one of the case study based on the venom genes of insect pesticides has strong potential to be used as biopesticides for control for by expressing them either in the transgenic plants like Bt crops or production of recombinant proteins. We have both options. Either we can express in, uh, in the Bt crops or production of recombinant proteins. One more important thing I want to say here, Bt crops, Bt genes, Bt insecticide, is effective only and only against Lepidopterus insectus. It is not effective against sucking type of the insects. Whereas sucking type of the insects destroy, cause more damage to the crops as compared to the ball worms or chewing type of the insects. Sucking insects not only suck the sap of the plants, they also transmit some pathogens. They also transmit some pathogenic bacteria. They also transmit some pathogenic viruses. Uh, during their um, uh, feeding process. So we are trying to develop such technologies to control the population of sucking insect pests. So our venom-based technology, venom-based approach is to control the uh, attack of Phenococcus solenopsis in cottons, not only in cottons, but it has more than 300 hosts. Generally, Phenococcus solenopsis will be controlled by the application of the venom genes uh, extracted from the Initial resonances so that we are able to protect at least 300 crop plants from the attack of this notorious pest, Phenococcus solenopsis. So we have analyzed the transcriptome, transcriptomic data. We have plenty of transcriptomic data and we have a sufficient information about the bioactive genes, bioactive proteins, which have some toxic insecticidal potentials and which can be exploited in future to develop certain products. And these products can be commercialized, can be incubated and they can be commercialized in the market through academia and industrial linkages. And our, our, overall, overall, sir, our objective is to develop these products and to deliver these products at the end of our stakeholders. Our stakeholders are the farmers. Ultimately, our all efforts, our research is meant to provide a relief to the farmers. It's meant to improve the economic conditions of our end users. End user is our farmers. If farmer is happy, then he, farmer will produce more food for us in the farms, then more food will go to the markets and then more hygienic and healthy food will come to our dining tables through the fork. So farm to fork, we are following the strategies with more produce in the farm, then you can get more 
food at your fork. So we are trying to develop such type of activities, but all this happened due to the complete and comprehensive understanding about the functional insect genomics. We are greatly thankful to the ICGBs and organizers of the seminars and particularly to our government of Pakistan who provides some money, always provide money in the form of competitive grants for the development of such novel approaches. Then my PhD students, my MPhil and MS students, my ex-PhD students who did their graduate jobs and my four PhD students are actively working on different aspects to develop certain products, to develop certain uh, solutions in the labs. So thank you so much. And Professor Dennis, over to you. If you have any questions, reservations, comments, most welcome. I'm here to listen to you.